Hi everyone, I'm Colette and I shoot stop motion for brands, products, travel destinations, and even weddings. I'm going to show you all of the gear that I use to shoot in studio and out of studio so you can see all the tools I use to create stop motion. This is the Sony a7R 3 and it's my go-to camera when I'm shooting stop motion in studio. When I first switched to shooting Sony, I rented this camera for a month and the day I had to give it back, I went online and bought it because I literally could not live without it. So it's super powerful. It has a 42 megapixel sensor. It's compact, lightweight. It has an articulating LCD screen, which is really helpful for stop motion. And it's really great to have so much control with these huge file sizes because I don't have to worry about cropping in, manipulating my color, editing really small details within my stop motion and still keeping the videos super high quality. All right, my next favorite camera that I use is the Sony A9. I shoot with this when I'm shooting stop motion outside or out of my studio like weddings or when traveling and it's really great because it has 24 frames per second burst mode and when I'm shooting out of the studio I'm not really able to direct my stop motions as much so sometimes I'm capturing moments as they happen. This could be like the kiss at a wedding or the first look and another great thing about the A9 is I can shoot in that burst mode and have it completely silent. So no one even knows that I'm there, which is really awesome. All right, the next camera is the Sony RX100. This is a very small yet powerful camera. I just brought this to Japan and whenever I didn't wanna carry my big gear around, I would just bring this in my pocket in case I wanted to shoot a stop motion and when I compared the videos afterwards, it was almost unnoticeable when, whether I was shooting with the A9 or the RX100. So I love using this for situations where I'm shooting just for fun or for social media. Now let's talk about lenses. This first one is the Sony G Master 1635 2.8. And it's great when I'm trying to emphasize scale, like when I'm shooting stop motion within landscapes. And it's also great in studio when I'm shooting overhead and I find myself needing to fit more in the frame, I use the 1635. The next one is the Sony G Master 2470 2.8. This is my go-to lens in studio and out of studio. Pretty much, I'd say 80% of the time, this lens is on my camera. Super versatile and sharp and always reliable. Then the next one is Sony G Master 70 to 200 2.8. This lens is awesome. I don't use it super often, but when I do, I'm so grateful that I have it. It's really great in terms of stop motion, usually when I wanna be really far away from the subject. So like in wedding ceremonies, I don't wanna be really close up to the bride and groom, but I can be in the back of the room and still get a really tight shot on the kiss. And the last lens I use is the Sony 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens. And this lens is so beautiful when I'm wanting to shoot a stop motion that has a nice soft background behind the product or portrait. Let's talk lighting. Lighting is so important for stop motion and photography in general. So one thing that I use is the Draycast LED 1000 Pro Daylight Panel. And I have two of these. It's really easy to travel with, which is nice if I'm going on location. And they also come with soft boxes, which is nice. And then there's a dimmer on the back, so you can dim the light from zero to 100. And that's that. And then my very favorite light, it's actually behind the camera right now. I use that either shining it through a diffusion panel or sometimes up at the ceiling just to get a nice, bright, even light. It's super powerful, a little bit heavy, but I still do bring it on location. All right, this is the diffusion panel I was talking about. In hindsight, I probably should just cut and show some B-roll of it because you can't see it. But it's really amazing because it emulates 
beautiful, big window light. Also on the topic of lighting, I always like to have foam boards like these handy because I use these to bounce light into the scene. So I'll shine a light directly onto this, which hangs from a C stand, and then this will bounce light onto the scene and it makes it nice and soft. So there's a white side and then there's also a black side. So if I wanna cut the light, I use the black side. If you've experienced shooting stop motion, you know how insanely important it is that the tripod does not move, nobody kicks it, it doesn't shake, it has to be really reliable. So I have two tripods I use. One is on the camera that's shooting right now. It's a Benro carbon fiber tripod and that's actually the first tripod I ever bought and I still use it in studio for almost every shoot. It's really sturdy but also lightweight so I can carry it on location but it's not what I use to travel because it's a little more heavy than my Manfrotto Be Free tripod. This is my travel tripod, super lightweight. I think it's only like a few pounds and it's still really sturdy. Even when I'm up on the mountain in high winds, it doesn't move. So these are the two tripods I would recommend. Another option for a tripod is a C-stand. I always use a C-stand in studio when I'm shooting overhead for a flat lay and the C-stand is amazing. You can use a tripod with a lateral arm, but a C-stand will just make your life so much easier. So you can buy any C-stand. I'm gonna link to one here, but you also will need a piece to connect onto the C-stand that will connect your camera. So this little guy is oddly expensive for what it is, but this is what you need. Another thing that's really important when I'm shooting stop motion in studio is tethering my camera to my computer. So I use this cord, it's a Tether Tools Tether Pro cable. Also make sure you have a dongle if you need one. When I'm tethering to my computer, I'm using DragonFrame, which is a software that is an amazing assistant for stop motion animation. While you're animating, Dragon Frame allows you to, first of all, click the shutter from wherever you are as long as you have this remote. So it has all the functionalities that you would need while animating. And some of the cool features of Dragon Frame are the live view. So if my camera is way overhead, I can still look at my computer and see a live view of what I'm shooting. And also the onion skin feature where I can see a light layer of the frame I just shot while I'm styling the next frame. Dragon frame is not a necessity, but it's really nice to have and it helps bring your animations to a more professional level. When I'm shooting with Dragon frame, it's actually putting the files straight from where they're being captured on my camera into my hard drive, which is connected to my computer. So Dragon frame's writing the files to this hard drive and not even writing them on the memory card of the camera. I have a four terabyte lacy rugged hard drive, so I can always rely on this being there and storing all of my files. But if I'm shooting stop motion outdoors or at a wedding or on location, I'm not tethering to my computer and I'm using Sony's tough cards, memory cards in my camera. And I usually use the 64 gigabytes, but the 128 would be awesome as well. In my kit, I always have extra Z batteries and make sure that they're full before you start shooting because with stop motion, you don't wanna have to change a battery in the middle of a shoot. <laughs> All right, this is a color checker on this slate because when you shoot stop motion, you wanna set a manual white balance. This I put in frame in the very beginning before I shoot anything and then in post-production I always use this frame to color correct and make sure the white balance is right. When I'm shooting outside my studio, I'm not tethering to my computer and I'm not using Dragon Frame, so I always have this Sony wireless remote. This allows me to click the shutter when I'm not standing right next to my camera and I also use it to avoid any camera shake when the shutter is pressed. With stop motion, there's a lot of little bits and pieces that it's always good to have on hand. So I'm gonna go through a few of those. One is clamps like this. 
wire this is really great this one's really little i have a bunch of different widths of wire but i use wire to rig certain items when i want it to appear like they're flying in the air then i have glue dots you probably can't really see these but they're also called zots i think tape is always great to have securing backgrounds and this blue painters tape makes sure that i don't take the paint off the walls also tweezers, really great for animating tiny little objects. For my series, This Mini That, where I animate miniatures, this is the tool that I used. The last thing is putty. So this stuff I always have on hand because it's perfect for holding an item down if you need it to stick to the background without obviously gluing it. The other major thing, which you might've noticed behind me throughout this whole video are seamless paper rolls. These I use as backgrounds for all my bright, solid colored stop motion videos. And they're made by Savage. They come in a bunch of different sizes, but I usually get the 53 inch across ones. That was all the gear that I use to shoot stop motion in studio and outside. It's a lot. And if you have any questions on any of it, feel free to ask me. You can send me a message on Instagram at Colette.Perry or leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help. Thank you so much for watching.